Hey guys, welcome to another commentary. Ah, can't talk all of a sudden. Another commentary done by Diggity Upper Hand Corner. We have Jumper from Team Red, bottom left hand corner. We have Oya from Team Urk. This is actually what map is this? I believe this is Polypoid. It is Polypoid. Which, ooh, I can actually. I'm going to leave this up for a second to catch all the cockaroos running around. Unfortunately, I wanted to have uh, an official BSL match from either Chobu League or ha Hasu League round of 32 up and available. However, they have been played. Don't have the replays yet. What I am going to say is immediately after this, well, not immediately after, immediately after on Thursday, this is currently a Tuesday for people that are watching this on YouTube later, um, immediately after this cast, and I did it again, half an hour after this cast, I believe, there is going to be the casting of group A and B of BSL Season 13 Gosu League. I think that's casted by Veer, and I should check out who else is casting it. Master Ray is going to be casting on Thursday. Um, that will be immediately after. Hopefully I can get in a raid around 11. So that should be uh, fun matches. But I think it is, I'm trying to think if it's Group A or Group B. I think it might be Group B has Zeddy and Doodle in it, which of course was a fantastic matchup. And it's amazing to see them. Uh, I guess I'm not surprised that they were able to up their game and end up uh, in Gosu League. Gateway opening here from Oya. These two players I should get into since this is a player highlight of both of these guys. Jumper. A U.S. an American Protoss player. I really like Jumper's playstyle because he plays a very creative game. Oftentimes, he's going to scout upper left first. Looks like Oya's headed that direction for, uh, as well. So once these probes see each other, my guess is they're going to readjust. Looks like we're seeing an assimilator, basically mirror builds on both sides of this. Um, and Oya, comparatively, he ends up. This is going to be a tough opponent for Jumper. Jumper is in Ghost League. I'm trying to remember what group he is in. Uh, I'd have to look it up in the background. But Oya just ended up playing as part of the group of death uh, this weekend in the Pro League of BSL Season 13. And that was in the group with Striker. I got to tell you, I was a bit disappointed because I was actually asked to do alternate casting for that. But I was solo with my daughter on the weekend and couldn't do it. And so it's like, I don't know, tears, tears from diggity that I wasn't able to cast that group. However... I guess this is kind of the makeup thing that I get. I still get to cast a bit of a uh, Oya, but Oya, very very strong player. He tends to be within the uh, honestly, as far as just MMR, pretty often he's in the top ten. I I would argue that he's maybe one of the top five players, just period, overall. So this is going to be tough for Jumper to go up. It look uh, go up against. It looks like he did get a bit of probe harassment, but his probe already getting taken out inside the base. It looks like Oya keeping his probe scout alive is wandering. No. Actually, it looks like he doesn't have quite the resources for range yet. No range being upgraded right off the bat. It looks like he is going to get a, a Dragoon out, however. And he's plopping down a Citadel of a Dune right in front of Oya's face. So throwing down Citadel of a Dune. However, no, and actually being mirrored in the opposite side. This is going to be difficult for Oya, or sorry, for Jumper to deal with because... He doesn't have the scouting information equivalently. So plopping down a pylon, trying to force that probe out this direction. But he is full on, basically. And this is going to finish, too, it looks like. There was maybe an opportunity to do a cancel. So that's died. Is he going to cancel it? I love the manor pylon. Brilliant play by Oya. There's the cancellation. So now, here's the thing. Oftentimes, you can plop down something like a Citadel of a Dune. But then you can shift back. And, and cancel it and build other units and try to play creative that direction. However, by plopping that po that pylon down, Oya is guaranteed, basically seeing the finished building and forcing Jumper down this tech route. Oya has his own Citadel of a Dune. It looks like he's gotten a forge and a Templar archive, so he wants to get cannons on the front to deal with potential DTs incoming. He's got that Templar archive to get DTs of his own out on the ground. And he's setting up to go ahead and grab his natural expansion. Opposite corner, Jumper has gone ahead and got a robotics facility. So kind of a blind counter situation here, where if Oya plants cannons down on his front door, it is possible that Jumper could cycle in to the main with some Dark Templar. First Dark Templar being produced. And the other problem, well, I guess actually the other advantage, I should say, for Jumper is it is possible he can go ahead and plop down his observatory and counter the DTs kind of accidentally of Oya. However... Since he's dedicated, I assume he's going to go shuttle first with this. Let's see if he does, in fact, opt for... He does, in fact, opt for an observatory. So getting a bit lucky in this regard that he's opted to go observatory first rather than going straight for the Templar Archives and playing from that route. But in this regard, this is interesting as well because 
he showed the Citadel of Dune and opted not to go for the Templar archives to follow and has instead opened up the observatory, even though he's going to be behind economically from Oya because Oya is going to have that nexus up much, much earlier. Oh my goodness. Look at this. This is jumper style play right here. He's grabbing his second expansion in the bottom right hand corner. So he's showing everything to Oya that, okay, yeah, you got me. Uh, I'm, ooh, this Dark Templar is going to have to get boxed out for a time. This is Zealot. He's going to have to probably pay with his life, potentially a Dragoon as well. It's not going to be... Too, well, actually, he's going to let that... Oh, no, don't let the Dark Templar in. Still trying to s surround that Dark Templar. It's moving in. It's going to get some pro kills, unfortunately. A bit of a mistake. Really quick surround and taking care of it, but he ends up losing two probes. He's three probes behind overall. But here's the trick. Oya is going to look at this and be like, okay, yeah, this is one base play, right? And... He was, his economy has been slowed down somewhat because he grabbed these two cannons on his front door expecting potential DT. Also, he's not going to have observers to get additional vision out there, grabbing a second gateway. No, it looks like he's actually going Psystorm to follow this up. Interesting. I like that. So second gateway, Psystorm. This is going to allow him to, well, on a couple, couple things this does for him. First of all, that allows if Jumper was going to go for a one base all in to follow this up. He was going to be able to storm the bejesus out of anything approaching his front door, allowing him to kind of defend against any sort of all-in. But on top of that, when you have Psy Storm in the mid-game, that's oftentimes like a, a critical point in PvP, is, is when you can get Psy Storm out there. So I like that it's both kind of defensive and aggressive as far as that tech tree goes. Jumper does have his expansion up in the bottom right-hand corner. He's well behind, however, in the overall probe count. The one advantage he has is this observer to go ahead and walk up and see what Oya's up to. Oya grabbing that second gas. Looks like he's just getting his third gateway, and he's putting down a preventatory cannon in his main just to make sure that he can get you know, basically keep eyes on anything that Jumper is up to. Also getting weapons one. That can be a significant advantage down the line. Jumper, in the meantime, still sticking, sticking at one gateway. He's just now grabbing his second gateway. He's going to go ahead and wander in. The cannons, actually several cannons going down. He's going to see the three gates. Also is going to be able to see that forge. Templar archives is going to wander up and also see the high Templar, which lets him know he needs to play a longer term ec economic game, maybe grab a third. And he is grabbing a third, ironically, at his main. So now it's kind of the situation has flipped and this is going to put Oya in a difficult situation because Oya has kind of invested heavily in playing more a I'm going to absorb your attack style play, which it, and it looks like now he's getting his own robotic facility. He is a little bit ahead in the overall supply count. He's significantly ahead as far as the probe count. He's actually plopping down two additional gateways. Man, Oya in the dark, just knowing what to do here. He's going ahead and grabbing additional units. He's going to need to supply up. He is going to have weapon one well before jumper. So his units are just going to hit harder. Plus he's going to just have a lot more gateways down. So... Jumper, to be able to defend this, looks like he's getting High Templar of his own. Where did he drop the Templar Archives? Like, looking for the Templar Archives in his base. Uh, there's the gateway. There's the observatory. There it is. Right above the uh, the gas. He's going to go ahead and grab Psystorm as well. He's adding on additional gateways. But he's essentially going to be at three base, comparatively. A second Dark Templar wandering out. Just wants to go ahead and get a look at the front door. And unfortunately for Oya, this might be conveying all of the information... He kind of wanted to see, but this is this is the tricky thing, that 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 sneaky nexus bottom right-hand corner. He is going to be able to see that shuttle wandering up full of High Templar. So let's see if he gets some Dragoons in position to go ahead and defend that. I actually like how Oya has kind of crammed this corner here where there are potentially drops. He's going to drop a preventative uh, cannon right there as well to make sure those drops just... It's going to be difficult to push this in, especially without shuttle speed. The Dragoon's also moving forward, potentially wanting to catch that shuttle before it's going over defensive cliff edges. Jumper risking this a little bit. Unfortunately, the Dragoon's pressing out a little bit too far ahead. He did have that Observer. That Observer's going to get picked out. That shuttle does manage... Does it manage to get over the water? A little bit of damage. The cannon not up yet. Able to drop High Templar. Storms the gas line, letting the Zealot tank the cannon, and trying to morph an Archon behind this. So at least able to disrupt a bit of economy. I don't know that was worth it overall because that was a lot of gas to lose. So that was gas, a shuttle, and a zealot. So a lot of minerals lost there for not a, an immense amount of interruption, but was able to halt the gas production for at least a small period of time. Jumper 
Maybe he actually got more probes than I realized, or maybe this is just the factor of producing off three Nexus, but Jumper all of a sudden way ahead in the probe count. Oya, feeling like he's economically ahead, just kind of wandering out with the army he has to go ahead and grab that third base. Jumper has tacked on additional gateways, so we've got, what is that, eight gateways warping in, robotics facility, and double forge to go ahead and try to catch up and spin things around that direction. He's also going ahead and getting Zealot leg speed, which is a critical point component that I do not believe Oya has just as of yet. Oya has his own robotics facility. He's going ahead and tacking on uh, his robotic support bay, getting his second forge as well. He Keep in mind, he has weapons one right now, whereas Jumper is not even so, just starting weapons one and armor one comparatively. Jumper setting up to maybe take that three o'clock location Oya moving out with his grouping of Dragoons. It looks like he's got seven and a High Templar uh, grouping up. There are more units on this side for Jumper, but Jumper does not have eyes. However, Oya might walk in to the high ground here. So it looks like he's kind of positioning to go ahead and engage. He's going to walk, yeah, heads up, taking a bit of free damage on that Dragoon. Jumper actually going to... Ooh, Sidestorm a little bit empty. Hits one of the High Templar, but two of the Dragoons otherwise. One Dragoon ending up too far forward. The High Templar gets taken out. Nice Sidestorm on that back set of Dragoons. Beautiful side storm from Jumper as it hits the doodad, just catching literally every Dragoon it looked like in that control group. And Jumper is setting up to go ahead and take his third. He's already got eyes on that three o'clock base. And is he going to go for like, this is extremely greedy. Is he going to go for double expand here? Oya still has not spotted that bottom right hand corner. I think he still believes he's in the overall economic lead because he's spotting that. He's like, okay, your third base isn't up. You're going to take that third base. And I see that I've got my third all up already. Oya setting up to go ahead and take his 9 o'clock as well. Jumper moving out. Scooting looks like above Oya's troop grouping. He has larger numbers, it looks like, of just ground troops currently. Zelt leg speed, keep in mind, is here so it can reinforce rapidly. Some Dragoons getting caught out of position underneath. And a pylon blockade going up for Oya to go ahead and box those units out. And unfortunately, Jumper... Not having some unit cohesion, some dark, some dark Templar, some high Templar getting wiped out. But in the meantime, Jumper getting boxed in to this nine o'clock base with it from a superior army for Oya. He's trying to get to the high ground, but he's also going to eat a lot of Psy Storm. Wow, nice Psy Storms. Great engagement from Oya. Psy Storming the high ground. Looks like Jumper is going to be able to sneak through. Some other Zealots, keep, that was the thing I wanted to mention that I didn't get through, is keep in mind the Zealots can reinforce rather rapidly with that Zealot leg speed. Some Zealots up here dealing with the Dragoons, but kind of a decent army split to force Oya to go ahead and back off. It looks like he might end up losing some pylons on the high ground at the 9 o'clock. This is at least going to delay that 9 o'clock. Fourth base is up for Jumper. Leg speed is now there for Oya. Big supply lead for Jumper overall. However, he's going to end up losing these Dragoons and this Zealot at that 9 o'clock base. It looks like he's going to go ahead and pull that Observer out. So Oya actually now taking the 6 o'clock. That's going to be his fourth. Jumper's been on four bases for a while, but this hasn't been saturated as of yet. The main starting to be a little bit thin. All sorts of gateways. Wow. Let's get a pure gateway count. So that's 12. 12 gateways up which is about where you want to be for late game. Double Forge rolling for Jumper. He's still going to be behind in the overall upgrade count. He's got level 1 weapons, level 1 armor just as of this second versus level 2 weapons for Oya. And Oya sitting back, he's actually, what has he got? 6, 7, 8. So a little bit behind in the overall gateway count. He's kind of fanning out. He has map control right this second. But it, we are in a situation where, for Jumper, he can just kind of sit back and relax a little bit. Level 2 weapons, level 1 armor. So still upgrade advantage for Oya overall. But Jumper, if he just sits back, continues to macro, he is going to hit 200-200 before Oya. If he can just end up with a, a nice engagement, a lot of zealots in that grouping. If he can end up with some nice storms and a nice engagement, could take this match. Archon moving forward. So we're seeing a late game army very, very rapidly in this PvP. It looks like this grouping of units being engaged. Oya pulling back with his units from the north, looking to regroup for an engagement. One Zealot providing that scouting information for Jumper. They're mirroring each other over the mid lane doodad. And Jumper reshifting to the north is finding some Dragoons. He wants to get the Zealots on top of the Dragoons and get some Psystorms there. Manages to hit a bit of a Psystorm. 
Psystorm whisks from Oya opposite corner. The Zealots eat a little bit of their own Psystorm. Another nice Psystorm for Oya underneath, but it looks like High Templar are exposed, but not before they're dropping an immense amount of violent lightning in the sky, softening those Zealots up. So Oya repositioning. However, Jumper with the superior gateway count refilling his army very, very rapidly. He's going to hit 200-200 before Oya. Oya does have four bases saturated. It looks like the 6 o'clock is well protected. And Oya looking for a storm drop to the north. A High Templar looks like he's going to try to storm. Whiffs on that one. He's kind of trying to do that one blind. Getting a good look at the gateway counts. Cannon whiffing. Oh, beautiful size storm over the probes that were trying to evacuate. And now the probe count. All of a sudden, in Oya's favor, wonderful storm drop. Finally, some Dragoons moving out. Looks like they're going to be able to take these... Ooh, counter size storm. Going to be able to take out also a High Templar... In, wow, insult to injury right there. It's like, not only was I able to wipe out your probes, I'm able to kill your High Templar as well and escape with this shuttle. Observer to the north. So, turning into a long-term macro match, Jumper has 200, 200. He's sitting at the 3 o'clock location. He needs to start pressing into Oya. And more than just pressing into Oya, he needs to get something accomplished. Oya positioned along that southern doodad. It looks like a high Templar getting picked off right there. Better unit cohesion from Oya overall. Jumper now engaging across the middle. Some good storms across those zealots. And a beautiful storms as Jumper was just pocketed. So despite having a smaller army, Jumper is eating a lot of beautiful side storms from Oya. It looks like he's finally getting a surround on the Dragoons that are here, though. You can just see the yellow just enclosing around Oya, and it looks like, despite some wonderful side storms, Oya, and despite superior upgrades at level 3 weapons, it looks like Jumper is going to be able to pin in this Dragoon army and wipe it out, just having sheer bulk. So nice positioning for Jumper, actually able to swing all the way around and trap all of Oya's units in. Now, can he capitalize on this, though, and wipe out a base? There's lots of cannons and reinforcements at the mineral only from Oya, moving in some additional size storms, catching that shuttle and softening up those Oya's size storms have just been beautiful. More size storm over those zealots. The zealots continuing to march forward, pressing into that third base. Zealots coming in to try to defend this. Does Jumper have enough to punch through? Looks like not. He's going to go ahead and back off. Shuttle gets taken out there. Was he able to drop a size storm? It doesn't look like he was able to drop a size storm. Over that mineral only. I'm not even sure that there were units in there. <clears throat> Might have just been a bait. Jumper regrouping with the units he has. Keep in mind, he's still got a fantastic gateway count. Looks like we do have 12 gateways. A lot of gateways in the background for Oya. Some size storms up on the high ground. Archons coming from the north. Bit of, some nice size storms from Jumper are actually getting just the edge of those zealots and those archons. But those archons so beefy with those shields. Trying to stutter step his way back. Archon split to the north. Zealots able to get on top of those Dragoons as well. And now all of a sudden, with those two engagements, Oya has not just the probe... Or sorry, he, he's behind the overall probe count lead. Has the supply count lead. He's going to go ahead and grab his 9 o'clock behind this. So Oya, his main... I'm not going to count the main as a functional base at this stage. It is just about out. So you've got basically four bases in the natural expansion, the mineral only, the 6 o'clock and the 9 o'clock, which will be up shortly for Oya. Oya needs to saturate that versus Jumper, where his main is mined out. His natural expansion is still functional. Three o'clock base is functional. Keep in mind this nine, this bottom right hand base. I'm not going to call full base because it was mining actually before that natural expansion. But it's four base versus four base. And Oya has not yet started mining at the nine o'clock. Big fight starting to group up over the upper left. The upper left is going to be critical. And honestly, the way this match is going, it could be whoever is able to establish any sort of base in that upper left-hand quadrant might end up winning this match overall. I feel like I missed a drop or something somewhere. Hearing explosions in the background. Oya right now, grouping his army. He's just, just the army movement has been spectacular from Oya. The storms have been spectacular from Oya thus far. Upgrades also in Oya's favor. Little missing some size storms right there. The zealots marching in. The archons are in front. Beautiful size storm for Jumper, though, as all of those zealots were grouped up, regrouping the archon, turning around, doing some damage. It looks like some zealots have also managed to get on top of the dragoons. So Oya 
bunching those zealots up and eating an immense amount of storm. And it looks like a couple empty storms comparatively. The High Templar are exposed. They're trying to bait out to go ahead and save these Dragoons. The Dragoons pulling out. Trying to escape towards that 9 o'clock base. Jumper looks like he's going to regroup, let them go. And he's cycling around potentially to either attack the 9 o'clock or at least a step. So he's checking this upper left-hand corner. He might decide to go ahead and establish that himself. We'll see. Oya regrouping. He's starting to march towards that 3 o'clock location with a bit of an army. So Jumper just going to stage a couple Zealots Dragoons here, it looks like. As he regroups over his mineral only. I think he's lost track of Oya's army, though. Oya trying to sneak across that... Towards that natural. is going to catch a High Templar there. But keep in mind this army might be pinned in. If Jumper responds rapidly. It looks like able to just to pick off that High Templar and escape. The small winds. And beautiful side storms again. On these retreats. It just feels like Oya's jumped in with his army. Dropped some side storms and escaped. Some more side storms on top of those Archons. And now Oya getting the better drop. Jumper trying to retreat to the high ground. Between his natural and his main. Oya needs to be careful though. Looks like I missed a... Storm drop here at the 6 o'clock location, which obliterated a lot of probes while that was happening. So Jumper able to do a counter strike and drop the probe count of Oya's even further. Some beautiful side storms on that Dragoon army. They have a battle probe in the midst of this. Another High Templar getting taken out, but Oya needs to be careful not to draw too far forward. Otherwise, potentially with the reinforcements from Jumper, he could end up getting sandwiched and losing this army. More reinforcements are marching up. Oya starting to position to threaten that 3 o'clock base. Looks like he's got some units that maybe want to try to go for a counterattack to that mineral only. He's going to go and, and dash up this high ground. So now, sandwiching Jumper instead with Dragoons to the left, the rest of his army to the right. Side storms across several of those Dragoons. The reinforcement's not coming out for Jumper. I'm not seeing the macro there. So it looks like Oya might be able to strike this mineral only and wipe it out unless Jumper can hurry up and get a move on to defend... His base, the Archon, dealing with those Zealots incoming, absorbing that attack, and the Dragoons pelting those probes in the meantime. It looks like these Zealots trying to get to that high ground. The Dragoons holding this. Oya reinforcing, so he's still going to have the high ground advantage on this mineral only, but he's not attacking the Nexus while all this is happening. A Dark Templar in the midst of this, noticing that that Observer was taken out, an Observer from Oya finally getting up to go ahead and take care of that. And the Nexus taking fire this entire time, but it has, it has not yet fallen. Jumper going ahead and backing off, sacking this base to Oya's high ground positioning and regrouping. Keep in mind, though, and it looks like he's going to end up losing probes out of this. Jumper still has the overall probe count advantage. However, critically losing this base in what is turning into a long-term starvation match. Archon being morphed here. And Jumper needs to, looks like he's just got a macro up regroup. Some nice size from picks off another observer overhead. Oya pressing the advantage. But eating a huge size storm there. Jumper might have done it. This is going to be so Oya keep mine down to 35 probes. He's not mining at the, not mining very well at the six o'clock location. Jumper is still holding that bottom right and that three o'clock. He's got more probes. I think he's got more expansions that he's working out of. He's trying to set up. He's also got, looks like a lot of, he had this territory. It looks like Oya was able to clear that out. Oya taking control by boxing Jumper into his natural expansion. Jumper, however, suddenly has a supply lead. If he can just sneak out of his base and wipe out what Oya has. I'm not sure that Oya has realized that Jumper had this bottom right-hand corner. It looks like some zealots are marching down that direction. He's going to be very disappointed. To walk in there and find... Well, it looks like he's just camping at the natural currently. So right now, I think he thinks he's got Jumper starved out. He's like, okay, your 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 mineral only is gone. I'm still mining at my 9. He's taking the upper left as well. In actuality... Oh, huge storms from Oya as Jumper trying to push out. So it looks like the skeleton crew that was out that regrouped to that 12 o'clock location re-engaging here. Jumper... Attacking uphill is able to get some nice side storms off there. Some probes. I'm not sure where they're coming from from the left. Probably stuck out of that mineral only earlier. Jumper needs to retake this position to go ahead and get out in the map and first of all deny additional bases and take additional bases himself before he ends up getting starved out. Oya desperately trying to fight Jumper back into his main. He does have a huge weapons upgrade. Sorry, never mind. The upgrades have stabilized. He only has a shield advantage currently. 
But Oya continuing to reinforce, and particularly if you can continue to have High Templar here and just drop those Psy Storms on top of Jumper's natural expansion, he's always going to get that bunched unit group. The Probe's trying to evacuate in the midst of a battle on the front. Oya actually drawing back. He wants to get them to, it looks like, that 3 o'clock base. Soon that's going to be Jumper's only active base where Oya's sitting at 3 bases. Soon to be 4. And now Jumper busting out. He needs to reestablish something, though. Trying to chase this army down. Oya shortly should be able to replenish his army. So keep in mind, Jumper has a lot of probes to work with here. But he doesn't have a lot of bases to mine at. He's only mining at that 3 o'clock location. Oya has just been bought. Man, and the Psy Storms have been incredible from Oya. Continuing to drop Psy Storms on these Archons, on these Dragoons. The Zelts repositioning. This is not a great fight for them with those Archons out in front. Great positioning from Oya, trying to keep the Dragoons stuttering and attacking from there. This upper left-hand base is mining, but it is somewhat exposed if Jumper wants to go for that. Here's the thing. Can Jumper take any of these bases out and get bases up himself? That is the big question. He's going to go ahead and try to grab his mineral only. He needs to get in the 12 o'clock, or maybe the mineral only or the natural in that bottom right-hand corner to stay in this match. Because his main is mined out, his natural expansion is gone. The 3 o'clock base is the only thing mining. The bottom right's gone. Looks like he's starting to move out to that natural in the bottom right-hand corner. In the meantime, Oya is still mining at the 6 o'clock. His mineral only, though it's looking thin, and that 9 o'clock. Then he's also got this upper left-hand base established. Probe wandering around. Some more beautiful size storms. Jumper still has a supply count lead. Some empty size storms right there. Oya's just used positional advantage and... Some incredible size storms to stay in this match. He's marching in to deny, continually deny, this mineral only. And you can just see, wow, Oya's size storms have just been next level. A great size storm as well. I just feel like I'm repeating that phrase over and over and over again this match. Incredible size storms. This has really been the match of Thunder and Lightning. And I guess I am, it's kind of late, but let's, let's be honest. It's more about the weather control aspect of it that's important. Who cares about hallucination? Nobody, nobody hallucinates these days, right? Mineral only is up, not yet saturated. A bit of a reprieve for Jumperer. The Zealots regrouping. The High Templar staggering. It looks like they're eating some size from themselves, but wow! Catching a lot of that Dragoon force. And honestly, with the, the Archons and the Dragoons, they might be able to press up and start bullying things around. Jumper still has the supply count lead. His, his army just has not been as cohesive as Oya's at multiple stages of this match. So he's got the reinforcements here, but hasn't quite gotten them grouped up. He's holding his mineral only. And with Oya constantly threatening, just being aggressive here over that mineral only that's given him free reign to go ahead and grab this upper left-hand corner, continue to mine at the 9 o'clock, continue to mine at the mineral only, basically freely. Beautiful side storms. Again, on the high ground, catching several of those High Templar. A lot of Archons on Jumper side for this fight. If he can turn around and re-engage. The Zealots marching forward. There is a High Templar. Two High Templars lagging. Let's see if they can get in this match and equalize things with those Storms. Great size Storms over those Archons. Those Archons can absorb a lot of that. The Zealots are starting to get on top of those Dragoons. The Dragoons getting pinned into that doodad towards the left. Some, Arc some Zealots moving up, picking off that last Dragoon, and it is a looks like an Archon-only army, practically, marching on top of Oya. And a couple Zealots have managed to sneak through there. They should be able to stop that mineral only in that upper left-hand corner if they just peek up and see it. Ah, oh, Jumper, go! There he goes. Oya going to go ahead and redirect that army. Is he going to be able to force a cancellation? It looks, looks like not. So he's just donating those three Zealots at this stage of this match. Jumper going to go ahead and use them to get some scouting. Well, maybe he's going to use them to do, get some scouting information. No, he's just going to back them off momentarily. The Zealots continuing to march. Check that bottom right. Jumper needs to get additional bases. Oya, for what seems like the first time in forever, has finally taken the supply count lead. He's got a much stronger economy than Jumper at this stage. And Jumper is in a lot of trouble. Bottom right's mined out. He's just mining gas right there. I think that actually might be why we're seeing so many Archons out of Jumper. is because he's been light on minerals and just had to produce High Templar and Archons to kind of cope in this match. Nice Psystorm over those Dragoons. Some Zealots eating a little bit 
a friendly fire right there. The Archons continue to press forward. The problem with Archons against this many Dragoons is the, the Dragoons can walk back and pelt those Archons at a distance. Oya continuing. This has just been the story of this match. I love the shield battery with this many Archons out in front. The Dragoons... Is it just Oya has been just constantly pressuring this mineral only and getting beautiful Psy Storms to negate a lot of Jumper's troop count advantages. Right now, the troop count advantage is on Oya's side. Zealots continuing to stream up the Dragoons with those Zealots boxing those Archons out, just pelting them. And Jumper with kind of an Alamo-style defense over this mineral only. More Psy Storms over that Dragoon line. It looks like the Archons are being forced to back off. Or sorry, the Dragoon's being forced to back off. But here's the thing. Oya can donate this attack grouping. He's still got additional bases. He can still reinforce. And even if Jumper sneaks out and is able to establish an additional base, Oya still has bases to spare. Probe's moving to the north. That might be an indication to Jumper that, hey, there's a base there. Looks like he is going to be able to wipe out this mineral only. But while he's spending time wiping this out, there are reinforcements marching up to go ahead and engage this location. Is he, is he even going to get this Nexus? It looks like not. Trying to retreat. More reinforcements coming from the right. Trying to regroup. The Zealots marching in. It looks like they are going to be able to get on top of this staggered line. Might even be able to get the High Templar. An empty Size Storm. Kind of a desperate Size Storm from Oya there. But the second Size Storm catching the Zealots in retreat. A bit of his own army as well. And Jumper once again being forced to back out. Oya really pressing into this. The Observer finally marching in. It's going to go ahead and see that base. And upon seeing that base, that's got to cause Jumper's heart to sink a little bit. Three o'clock base has still been mining this entire time. It looks like it is starting to get thin, though. It should be wiped out in not too long. This observe, sorry, this probe going to go ahead and find a zealot at that twelve o'clock. And even if he manages to somehow hero probe sneak this base up, Oya has the supply lead. Jumper getting the better spot of those Psy Storms right there. More Psy Storms, Psy Storms where they're in the gap trying to deal with that Zealot to the north. And Oya just again, incredible storms pelting everything on Jumper's side of the map. Right on top of that high ground over that mineral only once again. Jumper needs to save this now. Otherwise, he's going to end up losing this match overall. High Templar reinforcing on that high ground. And once again, you have High Templar towards that natural expansion where they can drop Psy Storms. GG from Jumper right there. Oya's economy overwhelming at this stage of the match. Great play from both players. Jumper showing a fantastic, honestly, fantastic play against who, someone who I'd, I'd call a top five player in the foreigner community right now. Wonderfully played. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Check out Jumper in, I believe he's in Gosu League this season. And check out Oya as he continues... Uh, his level of play, I think he was, I'm not going to spoil Group D, but wa I believe he, yeah, watch him in Group D, the Group of Death. Actually, a lot of players we covered now. So literally everybody we've covered here, we've got Oya in that match, or in that grouping, you have uh, Ziki in that grouping, you have Gosu Dark in that Z uh, in that grouping, and you also have Striker in that grouping. So I re highly recommend checking it out. Some really solid matches uh, in that bunch. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Going to move on to a, another match, and hopefully uh, for this will be a little bit less relevant to the uh, YouTube crowd, more relevant to the live Twitch crowd. Uh, hopefully next Thursday, we'll see. I will ho have uh, some Chobu League or Hasu League round of 32 replays for you. Thanks for listening, guys.